Hello. <coughs> joking. Joking. <sighs> haven't really spoken much yet today. Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you haven't been here before, my name is Debbie and I read a lot of books. And I've been reading a lot lately. Like I've had like five books on the go and I'm finishing them all round about the same time. Because at the moment I've finished two books that I haven't talked about yet. <laughs> and I'm coming to the last, I want to say 80 pages of, of a biography that I've got in my work bag. Today's book is A Stranger in the House by Shari Le Pena. Those who have been here before will know that I've read The Couple Next Door by Shari Le Pena. I say read, they're both audiobooks. <laughs> but yeah, The Couple Next Door was a really, really good book. That had me constantly guessing. And she's done it again with A Stranger in the House. She's an author where she keeps you guessing up until the final page. To be honest, in both of these books, up until the very last line, she's very good at putting a twist on you that completely type turns everything again and it's not like neat wrapped up in a bow endings either it's stuff where you're just like oh she could write a sequel if she wanted to because the story ain't finished it's not finished at all but yeah i'll read that blurb for you why would you run scared from a happy home you're waiting for your beloved husband to get home from work you're making dinner looking forward to hearing about his day that's the last thing you remember you wake up in hospital with no idea how you got there. They tell you that you were in an accident. You lost control of your car whilst driving in a dangerous part of town. The police suspect you were up to no good, but your husband refuses to believe it. Your best friend isn't so sure, and that even you don't know what to believe. So this is in fiction, crime thriller and mystery, and the duration when listening to it at a regular speed is 8 hours and 52 minutes. I'll admit the average speed is usually just a bit slow for me. Um, I usually read quite quickly, so with audiobooks it's a similar thing. I can process it a lot quicker. So I think I went up to 1.5 and 1.75 speed. So I think for me it probably took about six hours to listen to in total. The premise of it is so good. There's Tom and Karen Prupp and they've been married for about two years and at the beginning of the book uh, you see Tom coming home uh, to an empty house. Uh, the door is open, Karen's bag and purse and keys are all on the side. It's like she left the house with absolutely nothing in her hand basically and she just got in her car and just drove off. You find out that she was found driving in a really dodgy part of town really, really fast. She was speeding and she lost control of the car and hit a pole. Uh, she ends up in the hospital where you find out that she cannot remember what happened leading up to the crash. The last thing that she remembered was being in the kitchen making dinner. You meet uh, their neighbour who lives across the road, uh, Bridget. That's uh, Bridget with a D, not a T. Because I was just because I was listening to it rather than reading it, I was just like, are they saying Bridget? Or are they saying Bridget? And uh, so I looked it up, and it's Bridget with a D on the end. And uh, Bridget is uh, like best friends with Karen. You find out that um, since they moved in across the street, they've basically been inseparable. They constantly have like uh, drinks, like in the kitchen and stuff. So yeah, Bridget is in uh, the club's household quite a lot. As little things come out you realize that the title the stranger in the house i think like the couple next door it applies to like more than one thing or more than one person it's a it's a diverse title because it really could be about anything because with the couple next door it's just like oh it's about the couple next door but then you realize oh actually but it could also apply to the other couple next door and in this case it's just like it applies to more than one stranger in the house in a way because um, as you go through it, you realise that Karen might not be who you think she is. The neighbour might not be quite who you think she is. And that there's somebody else involved who could be the stranger in the house as well. Because as when Karen comes home from the hospital, you find out about times when she has thought that somebody has been in the house which wasn't her or her husband. Because she notices things like the top of her perfume bottle being taken off and like an extra glass on the side in the kitchen and like a body print in the bed and she's just there going 
I'm not going crazy. I, she's meticulous. She knows when things are out of place. And you do find it later in the book why she is that way. But I'm not going to say why because it would be a massive spoiler. But yeah, trying to figure out the identity of that stranger is very interesting. And when it puts a question mark over Karen on whether you think that she is who you think she is. And then you realise that Bridget has her own question mark over Karen and how she has presented herself to the world. You find out that Karen isn't on social media, she doesn't really have that like footprint on the internet so you haven't really got anything about her life before she married Tom. I have seen some reviews where people say that this wasn't as good as her first one, they found it a bit predictable and repetitive. And I will say I did find it a little bit repetitive because it, it felt like it was really trying to spell out certain bits. And I was just there thinking, oh, did I really need to get that again considering I've just been told it? Um, I think it was partly to do with the way that the police get involved. Because after the accident, you find out there was a murder on the same evening basically not far from where Karen was found after her accident and you just think oh did she witness something was she involved in it and so the police uh, become really really involved in visiting the club's house and visiting the neighbours trying to figure out what happened um, so it goes for like did anybody witness Karen leaving the house did anybody see if anybody followed her was anybody in the neighbourhood of the restaurant where the uh, guy was found murdered? But yeah, and as you go through, you realise that it is all connected and you just need to find the right puzzle pieces to kind of connect it all. I will say, though, throughout the book, I just thought I can't believe that people still are like Tom because he came across as a bit pathetic. I'm not sure if he was meant to be likeable because you get a lot of it from Tom's point of view. I mean, you do also get some chapters from both Bridget and Karen, but it is mainly a story from Tom's point of view, as he tries to work out what's happened, what happened to his wife, what happened before that. All of them are unreliable narrators. And there was a point when I thought Tom was more unreliable than he initially thought he was. I was just thinking, yeah, he's not squeaky clean in this either. And it does come out he's not <laughs> because you do find out that he had a relationship with uh, Bridget before he got with Karen and he never told Karen about the relationship he had with Bridget so that does make things a bit murky when you realize that Bridget and Karen have been friends since Karen moved in across the road and you're just like what is the motivation there are they actually genuinely friends has Bridget moved on but yet yeah, all these little question marks just everywhere as you try to kind of figure out how everything fits together I feel like my videos are getting shorter because I'm trying to be more careful about spoilers I feel like there are some books where you can really kind of delve into a lot of stuff uh, but with this one when the really big twist happens, it's one of those things where you're just like, oh, okay, that is something that somebody needs to discover for themselves as they're reading it. But yeah, it was just so good. I haven't even shown you the uh, front cover yet. But yeah, A Stranger in the House by Shari Le Pena. Can you see that? There you go. But yeah, it, I thought it was really clever. And I'll admit the final chapter when you're seeing things from Bridget's point of view. Um, and I saw a lot of reviews where people said they laughed almost out loud at kind of like the final lines of the book and I completely understand that. It's got elements of comedy to it while as well as being kind of I just be like oh it's like you're almost laughing in shock at kind of what Bridget is saying. And again, I'm not going to kind of go into that too much with because otherwise it'll spoil it. But when you realise what she's saying and where her state of mind is after everything that's happened it is kind of a bit of a laughable moment when you realize that she just can't let go of what's happened because i'll admit because with the audiobook it was read by tavia gilbert and i did notice that she has a uh, similar inflections in her voice to the woman who narrated the couple next door that was kirsten potter at first I thought it was the same person, but then I realised, oh, it's not the same person, they just got, like, it's just similar inflections in the voice, I don't know how else to describe it. The way certain people were narrated, I was just there thinking that if I'd been reading it, I might not have noticed it as much, but listening to it made me very aware of certain things. 
the way that Bridget was characterised with the voice and everything, because it's definitely a bit more high pitched and everything else, it's presented a bit more innocent, and I was just there thinking, I'm pretty sure it's going to come out that Bridget isn't innocent in this either, because she was just too sweet. The characterisation of her with the voice and everything just seemed too sweet to me. Because in the beginning when you just, you just, you're just seeing her as like it's a friend of Karen. Kind of watching just thinking oh what's happened here? And I was just thinking yeah it reminds me of those sickly sweet girls that you knew at school. And you were just like yeah you are totally going to like tell my secrets behind my back if I tell you anything. I'm sure everybody's met somebody like that. I knew somebody like that at school. And, and that's not just to characterise girls. I'm sure guys can do it too. But, you know, I think it's just... I think a lot of people have experienced that person who seems really sickly sweet to you and just like, oh, tell me your secrets. You tell them and then they go tell everybody else. So, yeah, that's how Bridget kind of came across to me with that voice. It was just like, yeah. Mm, yeah, well, I don't trust that sickly sweet voice. She's done something, she's involved somehow, but we just don't know how yet. But yeah, Stranger in the House, Shari Le Pena. If you like your twisty turny books, still go for it. There were certain points when, as things were quite coming out, I would probably say like a chapter ahead when it came to kind of guessing what was going to happen next. There were a lot of seeds planted at the very, very beginning, and you're just there thinking, is that a red herring or am I on the right path? And there's not as many red herrings in there as you think there is. Like, it's all very kind of surface level. But I still wouldn't say this was a bad book. I think in the other book I said there was a lot of he said, she said. It didn't feel like that in this one. It's written kind of in the present. You know, how people, like, he said, she said. In this case, it's almost like diary form. It's just like, today I did this and, you know, this is how I was being. Well, it wasn't this is how I was feeling, this is how I am feeling. So uh, if you're not a big fan of that kind of style of writing, it might be difficult for you. Because, I mean, I know there's certain styles of writing that I don't agree with. Um, there was a book that I read called Frankenstein, and that was done very much diary form with, like, almost no punctuation. And I found that really, really hard to follow, even though it seems to be a style of writing that seems to be coming in. Apparently, it's quite an Irish style of writing which obviously I've only read one book like that and so maybe if I read more of it I might get used to it but you know there are certain styles out there that some people might be a bit more averse to that yeah ultimately I thought this had a good story to it even though it was slightly predictable in places I think that as more things came out it was just like oh I didn't think of that though and so yeah the fact that the ending wasn't all like tidied up the fact that the ending is a little bit more open-ended and you just say like, oh Okay, this isn't all finished. There could be a sequel, but it just makes you think about the fact that nothing is ever completely finished. It's like people always think of us like the fairy tale ending, and it's just like, well, what happens after that? Because there's not an ending, it's the start of it, really. It's like that beginning of a new life, and this ending is definitely the beginning of a new life uh, for everybody. A Stranger in the House, Shari La Pena, that is the front cover. As I said, if you like a twisty turny, go for it. If you liked The Couple Next Door, I still think The Couple Next Door was better than this book, but this wasn't a terrible book. <laughs> Despite some reviews that I've seen, I did not find this like a one star type thing. I put it out of five stars, I'd probably put it at like three or four. That's A Stranger in the House. Uh, the next review I will be doing is The Man Who Didn't Call by Rosie Walsh. But yes, I have uh, downloaded a few books which aren't available for me to read yet. Uh, the one that I'll be reading next is The Catch by T.M. Logan. And then the other books I've got reserved at the moment, I've got The Lucky Escape by Laura Jane Williams, I've got The Seven Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle. I have heard so much about that book and I can't wait to read that. That should be the next one available because it's available in like a week's time got The Familiars by Stacey Halls. I've read two books by Stacey Halls now and I think she's fantastic. I've got The Thursday Murder Club by Richard Osman, The Chateau by Catherine Cooper and The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. That's another one that I've seen quite a lot about and people just say just read it, just read it. The fact that there were two books with the name Evelyn in it was just like oh that's throwing me off slightly but yeah. Uh, yeah! Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not already. Hello to the new subscribers. It's very, very nice to see you. 
so I'm going to wrap this up. Uh, see you next time. Love you. Stay safe, everybody. I'll see you next week. Mm -hmm. Bye.